Okay, so we're gonna get into doing the back side of the wall here. Um, now, we're gonna be doing six by six tiles. We kind of already went over what height we were gonna go off of the tub. I always recommend your first row of tile. Don't just set your first row of tile and go all the way around. If you have any unevenness, you can check this with your laser just to make sure. So, you know, on this edge, you got three and a half. And then on this side, we have, you know, almost four inches. So there's an example right there. You wouldn't want to start with a full tile um, on that side. And then by the time you get over here, you're going to have basically a half inch joint underneath your tub or, you know, three eighths of an inch. You need to be able to have the ability of scribe cutting this tile to get an even nice joint against your tub. So I always recommend taking a couple inches off. In this scenario, we're just going to go up four inches and that four inches is going to give us basically a, a fairly large tile at the top of the ceiling. So we'll always kind of go over with tick marks uh, of your layout. I just recommend just setting your laser to where, you, where you'd like it to be and then just run tick marks up the wall and just take a look at see see how that's going to come up to things. And uh, it's not going to be 100% accurate because by the time you get your spacers in there and things, it might be, it might grow, a, you know, a half inch or so, but it's going to give you a good reference point of what is going to be your top tile. So this is where we're going to put our border here. So we were going to do a, approximately a four inch border. And the way that we came up with that height was that we wanted our shower rod to be directly in the center of that mosaic. So 60 inches between, so normal uh, shower rod heights is between 58 and 62 inches. So you have wiggle room anywhere in between there usually works pretty well. So our border, we wanted to be centered right where our curtain rod goes in. So from there, you go from here. And then as you can tell, I have a fairly large piece at the top. So five inch piece. So that works out great. And then you have plenty of room if you had a cut, if your ceiling's not level, you have plenty of room to adjust. So you just always want to have the ability to scribe cut your tiles. I guess is mostly what I'm saying, because nothing's perfect. Nothing's 100% level and you need to account for that. Okay, so going from the, the center, if you want to check out your tick marks, just work your way over, see what will it'll look like in your corner. And this will most likely be a five inch piece or five and a half inch piece, somewhere in between there. Let's see here. Yeah, we got five and a quarter. So that works out great because then when we do a staggered pattern, five and a quarter, that's less than six inches. So we'll probably be about two and three quarter inches for your, your other pieces on there. So, but a laser is gonna really help you out. You wanna be able to make sure that that first row is 100% level and then you can easily work your way up. Okay, so you can see that this is a fairly thick consistency. So using the flat side of the trowel, I would recommend just burn it into the substrate. going to be using a quarter inch by quarter inch trowel. Most of the time I set my tile with the same thickness of uh, trowel on the smaller tiles, but this isn't always the, the best way to, to know whether you need it. I'll show you here in a minute. We'll, we'll spread this thin set first. Okay, so one way to so these six by sixes, I would always back water a little bit too. But just to start this out, to make sure you have the right trowel size, is just stick a piece on here and see what kind of coverage you're gonna get. So that's pretty good coverage. You wanna have 95%. When you see this all suctioning off like that, that means you have really good coverage. I have a little bald spot here, but basically as long as 95% of this entire area is covered in thin set, that's what you want it to look like. Okay, 
Okay, so we'll just start right at the center here. And then I like using these horseshoe shims. These are much nicer than those rubber spacers. This makes it really easy to shim it up. Now you're gonna want an expansion contraction at the tub layer. So make sure that you uh, put something there. Because the main reason for that is that not only expansion and contraction, but it's nicer to have something that you can actually fill in with thin, uh, silicone. So when you have a gap here, it allows that silicone to go into that groove and then it really holds on. So your silicone will last a lot longer if you have a gap to, towards the tub. And I typically, I mean, you can put spacers in between here. I typically just eye up my vertical joints. I don't see any reason to go through putting all of the uh, horseshoe shims on the vertical joints. the rest of it a lot easier. See, the, the process is pretty repetitious. You want to back butter every single tile, paying attention to your vertical joints, just eyeing those up to make sure that they're even, and then using those horseshoe shims and always referencing that laser. So if you follow this type of method, you'll have a successful installation. bring this into the shelf and basically we made this pretty easy because now the shelf is actually 36 inches or the niche I should say is 36 inches so we'll be able to go up one more row because this is a six inch piece here so we'll have another row and then we'll put our shelf and then it'll go every 12 inches for the shelf so it makes it a pretty nice when you have the uh, when you have the grout joints lining up with the bottom of your niche it makes this whole process much easier. Okay, so we gotta overcome a shelf so this worked out really well when we lined these joints up with the bottom of the niche we were able to basically right at the end of a towel layer put a shelf so we're just going to be using these little small pieces of quartz for that so but what you want to do is notch this piece over top of our niche of, of our shelf so we have five and a half it's got a five and a half inch piece okay so we're just going to notch this I'd say the easiest way to 
do this is just put a piece of Okay, so you want to have a little bit of wiggle room with this shelf because you want to be able to shim it and angle it down. Plus, you're going to be putting a caulk joint against that as well. So that's going to work for this. It'll work pretty well. Okay, then I just wipe this thin set out so that you can place that shelf in when you're ready to do the niche. I would probably double check the placement so that should work. this shelf so put your shelf in place mark the side and the notch out and then from there you can take your shelf and just trace it onto your tile and if you cut the line that's when you'll get a little bit of extra space that you need to be able to pitch that shelf so we're just gonna cut out that whole section You got a little bit of wiggle room, find a 16th inch joint. So then I'll be able to just pitch that back shelf so that when water hits my shelf, it runs out. So that works out pretty good. So from this layer up, we're gonna be doing our mosaic. So we're gonna be stopping here for today while we let that mosaic set up. So just make sure you scrape out all this thin set and just clean it up. All right, so we're gonna be using some bull nose, and uh, just like the waterproofing, I always recommend bringing at least the bull nose, at the very least, having the bull nose coming down alongside the tub. Because again, this is still the same area where there's always issues um, with water going down the side edge of the tub and then deteriorating that drywall. So having the tile going directly to the edge is, uh, or, down along the side of the top is gonna to make sure that it lasts a lot longer. So let's go ahead and lay this out and see how this turns out. Basically a four and three quarter inch piece. So that works out pretty well, because that'll leave us an inch and three quarter. So what I would do is offset the corner rather than just having another small piece mirroring each other. I would recommend doing that fuller, that four and three quarter inch piece off of this so it looks like the tile is bending in the corner. So all we wanna do is make sure that we end up with the smaller piece in the corner so that this bends through. So basically, instead of going with a full tile, we're gonna start out with a half tile.
with this thin set, even a couple hours later, you can start taking some of these out and cleaning up the tile. Definitely gonna make it easier on you if you can do it even in the same day. So just make sure it's hard. This is probably about three, three hours later that we're taking these out. But uh, when the thin set's soft, it certainly makes it a lot easier to clean up the tile. A white scrubby pad and just scrub off all the tile. Okay, so same concept on the plumbing wall, nothing different than this opposite wall, just mirroring that same concept, just running the bull nose down the edge of the tub, and then um, just trying to keep that pattern in the corner to look like the tile is bending in the corner. Um, again, just to reiterate, I don't, I personally, it's personal preference, but I personally don't like having two smaller tiles together in the corner. I like to offset them so it just looks like one tile folding in the corner. But it is personal preference. There isn't any right or wrong. It's just what looks good to you. Um, so we're gonna be going in the pl this plumbing wall, lots of different features going on here, but we got our niche to redo. We're, we have our niche to tile at the same time of all of this. But first thing is, let's get this first row straightened out. Okay, so for the bottom sill, regular a regular six by six is gonna require a joint in between here. So what I always like to do is buy a couple pieces of something larger in this same style. So this is just a four by 12 piece so I can get a solid surface on my sill. So we're gonna go ahead and put the sill in, put the backing up, get our shelves in, and then we'll bullnose around so that we can have an indication of where to cut the tile uh, against this bull nose. So let's go ahead and just measure this three and a half. That's what it normally is by seven. Okay, so then I would make sure that this tile here is just a slightly proud so that you can make a nice joint with your bull nose. If this is recessed in, you're gonna have a nice big grout joint against your bull nose. So if you have this just slightly proud, it'll be, it'd be best for the installation of your bull nose. Okay, so just put a little bit of thin set in there. Let's take our shelf in. 